subtle and you know going with the smaller guy and you try to work? Well, um, to be honest, that's how much respect we have for him and how good we think he is. Uh, when you have a player who is he scored 20 uh, 20 times, I think is what I was told. He's in the top cup win rebounding. He's fifth or sixth in assists. Everything they do goes through him. So we felt like our best chance to compete and pull an upset would be to try to eliminate him from the game as much as possible. And so we, we played diamond in one and denied him and tried to not let him touch it. Unfortunately, he touched it one time in the first half in that defense, and he drove us down the lane and scored. Uh, he's, he's a great player. I mean, I, I'm sure people have, you know, know that up here and have enjoyed watching him, but he's, he doesn't score it like McDermott, but he impacts the game so many ways. First off, he's a good defender. You watch him jump out and hedge ball screens. I mean, Tremik Sutherland's as fast as any guard in the league, and he usually can turn corners and get in the lane, and Seth, Seth Tuttle's defense prevented that. You know he's a good rebounder, unbelievable passer, best passing front court guy in the league. And, I mean, I, I, he's just, he's fantastic. Yeah, he's fantastic. I mean, it, it, it's really close right now. The level he's playing at, I think at the level I watched McDermott play at as a senior, like I said, he scored it more. But if you go complete game, I, I could probably give you a heck of an argument that Tuttle's better. So just you, because of all the stuff he does. He said he's starting to get a little annoyed. Is that the goal? Well, we, <laughs> yeah, I, I thought he shoved off twice when he was going up to ball screen. And unfortunately, I saw it, and they don't let me have a whistle during the game. I called two offensive fouls, but they didn't. Um, I, I think it was probably frustrating for him because he didn't touch the ball. And he's so good, and he's so used to having it and being able to move through. And, um, you know, it didn't have enough of an effect on the game. Uh, unfortunately, we shot like we shoot, and that's the difference. But we, I thought we did as good a job on Seth Tuttle as what we were going to do. If we'd have played man, he'd have had 20 and 15. And that's a fact. So I've seen that movie, and I got the tape. If you want to watch the first game, we couldn't guard him. And so we tried something different. We had some success with him. Uh, but, you know, overall, we offensively, we were just uh, anemic. First half, though, you were able to stay with him. You, you hit some shots, and you did some other things defensively as well. Yeah, I, I thought in the first half we did everything we had to do. Uh, it was very early in the second half when the tempo had slipped from us. We took three shots off less than two passes. Uh, that that had no chance to win that game, and that that we had to stick with what we were doing, and we made one of them. We missed two. They led the runouts. We also had a couple plays that I really felt like I thought our guys played really hard. I thought we hurt ourselves and shot ourselves in the foot three occasions. I mean, I'd almost file them under the false hustle where we shot and missed, and we went after offensive rebounds when we were blocked out and had no chance to get the ball. And what it led to was, instead of us having floor balance and running back and them having to run offense, they got a couple layups and a three-point play in transition. And, and that's really where the game opened up to 10. It was our shooting too quick and when one turnover in there and them getting out in transition. And, and we pursued some offensive rebounds that, you know, you want guys to play hard, and our guys really wanted to win and wanted to play well. And uh, it's tough, but you have to play smart. Playing hard is never enough. You gotta play hard and you gotta play smart. I thought our, our effort was good, our physicality was good, our basketball savvy lacked in some on some key possessions where we didn't didn't have a chance to get the ball. And you go running past it and like you're flailing for it, and all it does is give runouts the other way. Anything else, for Coach? Good. We got some good notes from Nate tonight. Yeah, I thought Nate played well. Nate, you know, we've got to get Nate a little more involved in the defensive rebounding. However, um, I could say get Nate involved in defensive rebounding. But uh, offensively, he's a good passer. He's a good shooter. He helps us spread the floor. Um, and, you know, I, I thought that uh, I, I think he's really been, been improving for us, which has been good to see. And I'm going to take two seconds to say this real quick. But um, I, I, for the local guys like Marvin Singleton, I don't know if you got like how much better he has gotten. And I know today, you know, you can grab the stat sheet and say, well, he had two points and three rebounds. I think he's as big a reason why they're ranked 10th in the country this year versus last year where they were just a solid team. He's doing all the nitty-gritty stuff. And when you watch film, he's so physical defensively. He makes their team have a physical appearance because of how physical he is. And, and, and the amount of improvement that kid's had, it, it's incredible. I mean, we played him three years ago, four years ago, when he was first playing, he was a role player and didn't play a lot of minutes. 
we didn't even guard him, and now he can make shots. You saw the big shot he hit at Illinois State. I just think the kid deserves a little bit of credit. He's easy to forget because there's so many good players on there, and you got a great coach. But he, he's he's a he's a good player, and he's a big key for why they're doing well. So okay, thanks guys. Travel safe. Thank you.